By 1150, it was in decline. The great turquoise road over the Mexican High Sierra abandoned. But the Anasazi world still flourished. The people of Chaco Canyon simply moved to other locations. Many went north to Mesa Verde, which at that time was reaching its cultural and architectural height. There, under the shelter of the pine-studded mesas of southern Colorado, the architects of Chaco Canyon would help create some of the most stunning buildings of all time. The largest of these is known as Cliff Palace, though it is a palace in name only. These beautiful stone buildings of the Anasazi were home to common families. It was a society based on equality. Men rotated service on public works. Women plastered houses. The man who farmed also carved. Spiritual leaders tilled the fields. Each time when I see and visit any ancient dwelling, I feel close because these are my ancestors, my forefathers for centuries. With little meditation, looking at their dwellings, within a few minutes, half hour, I get refreshed. The people of Mesa Verde and many other Anasazi towns relocated around 1300. The period of the ancestors came to an end and the modern day Pueblo world took shape. Traditions that live today in the American Southwest, the way of life, the architecture, the religion, are the resonance of a heritage reaching back thousands of years. Along the Mississippi River, six miles from present-day St. Louis, Missouri, there stood a city that once dominated the heart of the continent. At its center was a powerful leader. A great number of years ago, there appeared among us a man who came down from the sun. This man told us that he had seen from on high that we did not govern ourselves well, that we had no master, that each of us had presumption enough to think himself capable of governing others while he could not even conduct himself. A thousand years ago, the great son, a leader who was both king and pope, lived atop a man-made royal mountain 10 stories high, its 16-acre base larger than any pyramid in Egypt. He told us that in order to live in peace among ourselves, we must observe the following points. We must never kill anyone but in defense of our own lives. We must never know any woman besides our own. We must never take any things that belong to another. We must never lie, nor get drunk. We must not be avaricious. We must give generously and with joy and share our subsistence with those who are in need of it. From the heights of his royal estate, the great sun mediated between the Creator and the people, between the sun and the earth. This is Cahokia, city of the sun. The great sun ruled the thriving center of a vast Mississippian culture. Outside the walled city, communities of farmers, hunters, and fishermen stretched for miles, surrounded by fields of corn. With 20,000 residents, no city in the United States would surpass Cahokia's historic size before 1800. Only then would Philadelphia's population eclipse the ancient center.
Cahokia was the pinnacle of a mound-building culture with traditions dating back to before 1000 BC. Thousands of mounds still dot the landscape from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico. An average funeral mound in the Ohio Valley was three stories tall. Construction could represent 200,000 man-hours of labor, or 100 men carrying the baskets of earth for a year. But few mounds compare with the religious effigy located 50 miles east of Cincinnati, Ohio, the Great Serpent Mound. The enormous snake stretches over 400 yards in length. While their earthworks are the mound builders' most visible legacy, their smaller creations are their most beautiful. Only glimpses remain of the people who changed the course of life on the northern continent. Most of their material world, wooden buildings, boats, baskets, woven textiles, leather footwear, and clothes, have long since turned to dust. <laughs> 